it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink. And listen. The Swamp Man Ms. Wallenby was a strange old woman. She'd chosen just about the worst place in the entire country to live, and that was right in the middle of one of the filthiest swamps in the South. She lived in complete solitude, her only neighbor being the equally strange Mr. Carbuncle, who lived about a half mile away in his shack of a home. Oh, contrary to Carbuncle's home, However, Ms. Wallenby's house wasn't in a bad state. It was a fairly large two-floor deal and looked fairly new. The woman seemed to take care in the looks of her swamp house. It did, however, look exceedingly out of place, considering it was in the middle of an overgrown forest of shit. Ms. Wallenby just so happened to also be my aunt. I'd never actually met the woman before in all the 16 years I'd been alive, my mother never talked to her because of bad relations, but my 15-year-old sister Sarah had insisted that we go visit her. Even after my mother refused, Sarah decided to work out a deal where just the two of us could go visit her while she stayed home. My mother was completely against the idea at first. She called Ms. Wallenby a crazy old shit who lives in the middle of the kind of place that suits her character well. Mama told us that the only reason she actually lived out there was to look for a secret deposit of treasure that had been hidden in the swamp long ago. Well, Mom really shouldn't have mentioned that last part to us, because after she did, Sarah lost her mind. She said that now we absolutely had to go visit the old lady because she wanted to search for this treasure. Well, eventually, after enough pleading and begging from Sarah, my mom finally gave in. She told us that we weren't going to be staying with the old woman more than a week, though. She sent the two of us off on a bus from Alabama, where we lived, down to some bumble town in the middle of the Louisiana swamps. The lady on the bus, Martha, turned out to be a slightly overweight woman in her young thirties, and soon after we met her, she became the biggest bitch that both of us had ever met. She complained about everything from her boyfriend's manscaping habits to accidentally using her grandmother's nair at one point. Martha did, however, know how to get to Wallenby's house from the bumble town in which she'd gotten off the bus. She told us that Wallenby's house was about a mile down a trail which led into the swamp, beginning at the bus stop. And then Martha left us while complaining about how only stupid hermits would live in a mile off into the swamp. Sarah and I departed the bus and headed off on the trail Martha had told us about. I happened to agree with the woman completely. Miss Wallenby was kind of a dick for living out a mile from civilization on a trail which didn't look like it could be accessed on any kind of vehicle. Well, the swamp was very misty and damp. There were strange shaped trees all around the place, with patches of mud and water all around. About halfway down the trail, we passed a shack which looked like it was completely abandoned. Oh, think that's Carbuncle's house? asked Sarah. No, I replied. Mom said Carbuncle lived further into the swamp. That probably isn't his house. We continued down the path. Now, looking down the road, we eventually spotted a large white house just kind of sitting there in the middle of the swamp. Well, I knew, and I assume Sarah did too, that this house belonged to Ms. Wallenby. As we approached the house, we noticed that the woman herself was standing outside the structure. She was indeed an old-timey-looking woman, but hadn't quite gotten the complete set of grey hair yet. She wore a dress that was made of rags and a white, dirtied shirt with overalls. Ah, there's the two, said Ms. Wallenby excitedly. Oh, yes, and you two are Tim and Sarah. Well, of course you are. No other kids ever come out into here. Well, not surprised at all, said Sarah quietly. The woman then came over and gave us both awkward hugs. Ms. Wallenby led us inside the house, where we all sat down and began a general conversation about each of our lives. It was that kind of conversation that one only usually has with an old lady, where you answer questions about your interests, where you go to school, well, all those types of things. 
Listening to Miss Wallenby go on about herself was one of the most tedious things I'd ever listened to. I was surprised there was so much going on in the life of a swamp hermit. I decided to, in an attempt not to be rude, ask her why she lived in the swamp. Ah, it's a great place to be, she'd responded. I'm the kind of lady who likes a little seclusion here and now again. Mind you, it was a nightmare trying to get the city to allow me to build a house way out here. Mom said you were out here because of treasure buried in the swamp, said Sarah. I cringed at little Sarah's statement, thinking it was just a little rude for her to be saying such a thing. Ah, not really, said Wallenby. She chuckled, although it'd be nice to have. Sarah smiled. It's uh, not exactly treasure, you see, she continued. It's actually just a load of gold. Well, there's supposedly a big deposit of gold that was dropped off here about 200 years ago. I guess there were some miners who, having struck it rich back in California, were traveling back east with their loads back then. One of them apparently died in the swamp, but had hid his deposit before he'd finally killed. Buried it around here somewhere. Fun story, said Sarah. Yeah, but that ain't the best part, said Miss Wallenby. Now and then, folks around here say that the ghost of that miner stalks the swamps, looking for his gold. Apparently he'd forgotten where it was located after his untimely death, and now stalks around looking for it. Sarah laughed. Folks around here, who are they? Are you talking about Carbunkle? Well, suddenly, Miss Wallenby's face grew silent and serious, almost unnaturally so. Ah, Carbuncle knows just as well as I do that the miner walks around here at night. Well, I then began laughing. <laughs> You're not serious, I said. Are you trying to convince us this is actually true? Oh, it is true, said Wallenby. Ah, bullshit. I replied. Miss Wallenby, ghosts don't exist. Oh, I've seen that bastard with my own two eyes, she said. And so was Mr. Carbuncle. Now why don't you two go upstairs? It's getting dark outside. And without hesitation, both Sarah and I got up from the table and went upstairs, grabbing our things and taking them with us. Oh, first bedroom on the right, yelled Miss Wallenby after us. Sarah and I climbed the stairs and entered the bedroom. There was a bed and futon waiting for us in there. Closed the door and we both sat down. A crazy bitch, said Sarah. Mom was right. Well, I think being in this swamp has really gotten to her, I said. This story that there's a miner, a freaking miner, that lives in this swamp is pure horseshit. Can you believe it, said Sarah. We pulled ourselves into one of those cliché ghost stories. Oh, it's got all the elements, doesn't it? The swamp, the crazy old woman, and the legend of a ghost. Well, the old woman needs something to talk about, doesn't she? I said. God damn living in a swamp and all. I mean, who the hell does that? And we both laughed. We talked a little more about our crazy situation, which we put ourselves in, and then decided to go to bed. It was Wallenby. We realized that night, left her front porch lights on during the night. Those lights were just about as bright as lights can be, illuminating a whole hundred feet of the swamp in front of her house, not to mention the light blazed through the bedroom's window, of which there was no curtain. About two hours into the night, during which I had not even attempted to close my eyes, I heard a furious banging noise from down below. Sarah and I both shot out of bed. She, apparently, had not been sleeping either. What the hell is that woman doing down there? I said furiously. I moved over to the window and looked out. Oh, and also, I don't know what she thinks she's doing leaving these... I, I stopped. There was a person out on the porch. He was a tall man, roughly a little taller than Miss Wallenby. He had a long grey beard and black hair. He was wearing a brown shirt with brown overalls, and the hat covered his eyes. Sarah, I said quietly, there's a guy out there. Come, look. She walked over and peered out of the window alongside me. Who the fuck is that? She asked. 
Why the hell is he out there at this late at night? What is it, 11 o'clock or something? Oh, it's probably that carbuncle guy, I said. That old dipshit's nothing better to do than wander around at night. Oh, maybe it's the ghost of the miner, said Sarah, grinning. Ooh, spooky. Shut the fuck up, I said, rolling my eyes. That old woman's bullshitting us to the highest tier. The man below turned to face away from the window, his back facing the house. That's when Sarah and I noticed something. The man was holding a large, rusty knife in his hand. We both gasped at the same time. Oh, no fucking way, I said. That old carbuncle guy's a loony. That shit sack probably carries that thing around because he's insane, said Sarah. What should we do, I asked. Should we tell Wallenby about that guy? No, said Sarah. We should probably just stay up here. I don't think Wallenby would do anything about it, honestly. You both step back away from the window. Don't let that bumblefucker know we're here, I said, and Sarah nodded. Needless to say, the rest of the night was completely sleepless for both of us. We'd simply laid in bed all night, thinking about that crazy old guy outside. The porch lights continued to shine in our faces for the rest of the night as well. By the time morning came, two of us were not only shook up from the previous night, but also a little pissed off that we didn't get any sleep. We were caught off guard in the morning by the screams of breakfast coming from downstairs. The two of us lazily slithered out of bed, got dressed and made our way downstairs. And as Wallenby had prepared pancakes for us, pancakes which, I must say, were not the least bit bad. They were almost perfect in taste, size and shape. You two sleep well last night? She asked. No, not really, I responded. Well, those posh lights kept us up all night. Oh, uh, terribly sorry about that, said Miss Wallenby. I'll go up and put a board on the window today, or something to help block the light. Why do you keep the lights on? asked Sarah. Oh, simple, said Miss Wallenby. To keep away the ghost. Oh, for God's sake. I said, sighing. What are you talking about? Oh, the ghost of the miner, said Miss Wallenby, waving a small knife in her hand. I turned to Sarah. Look, she actually believed this shit, I whispered to her, and Sarah looked equally as astounded as I was. Suddenly, there was a loud bang on the front door, and it startled all three of us. Oh, exclaimed Miss Wallenby, trotting over to the door. Oh, it's Mr. Garbuncle. Oh, shit. Miss Wallenby had accidentally cut her arm with a knife, dropping it to the ground. She quickly pulled a towel from the counter and wrapped it around her cut. She then opened the door, revealing a man standing behind it. Well, the man was rather short and stout, with a short mess of curly hair on his head and no facial hair whatsoever. He was dressed in a green coat and black pants, a rather formal dress for someone who lived in a shack in the swamp. Oh, good morning, Mr. Carbuncle exclaimed Ms. Wallenby. Uh, these are my guests for the week, my nephew Tim and my niece Sarah. Good morning, said Mr. Carbuncle with a wave of his hand. What can I do for you? asked Miss Wallenby. Well, I wanted to converse with you about that old shack on the side of the trail, said Mr. Carbuncle. Well, I think the both of us want to tear that thing down, but we need to, for some reason, get permission from the city to do so. Apparently, it's city property. Well, let's talk about it then, said Ms. Wallenby. Children, when you're finished, you may go and play. Wallenby and Carbuncle talked through most of the morning, it seemed. Sarah and I had gone outside into the swamp, partially to get away from the woman and partially to explore the area. Oh, that old woman's really strange, said Sarah. Don't you think? Well, I don't think she's that way on purpose, I said. I just think she's a little sick from the swamp life, and that's all. Listen, I need to tell you something important, said Sarah, instantly turning serious. That Mr. Carbuncle that we saw this morning, he in no way looked like that guy we saw out the window last night. I know, I replied. I have no idea who that guy was. I think we should ask Wallenby about it, said Sarah. No, I replied. She'll just tell us it was a miner or some bullshit like that. 
I don't know, said Sarah. That guy did look an awful lot like a miner. Ah, don't you be buying into her crap now, I said. There's probably some other guy from the city or something. What was he doing with a knife, though? Asked Sarah. You consider that part yet? Hmm, I don't know, I said. This whole thing seems strange. I don't know that I like this place, said Sarah. Well, I guess we should just try and suffer through the week, I replied. As long as we can deal with Wallenby's obsessions with this minor shit, and we can survive it. The day drew on, and Sarah and I explored the area some more. We ended up finding nothing except pools of dirty water and the occasional frog. We were heading back to Wallenby's house, the sun just beginning to leave the sky. We were complaining to each other about how people we knew back in Alabama, people we hated, and people we knew who were idiots. After all, we had to entertain ourselves with something since we were in the middle of nowhere. As we approached the shack, which we'd passed on our way to the house the previous day, I was stopped immediately by Sarah. She grabbed my arm and stopped me. What? I asked. What the hell are you... Shut the fuck up, whispered Sarah. She then turned and pointed to the shack, which at this point was about 50 yards in front of us. I looked inside a hole in the wall, which was probably a space for a window. There was a man inside the shack. A tall man wearing a brown jacket with overalls. He had a long grey beard and a black hat. It's that guy again, whispered Sarah. He's in there. We both stared at the guy. He raised his arms and, holding a large, rusty pickaxe in his hands, swung at the ground, making a loud sound. I was in absolute disbelief. At first, I'd assumed that somebody was playing a practical joke on us. Perhaps it was Wallaby, trying to convince us that this miner actually existed. I realized then, however, that the woman was probably a little too old and a little too batshit crazy to do something like this. Look, we run around the other side of the shack, I said. We need to get to Wallaby's house as fast as we can without being seen by this guy. Sarah nodded. We both turned to the side and I began to walk quietly across the swampy land. Sarah followed close behind. We continued along the side of the shack. As we finally passed the side, we began to walk quietly along the other side of the path towards Wallaby's house. I think we avoided that guy, whoever he was, I said. I hope so, said Sarah, turning around and looking behind us. Shit! She suddenly yelled, pushing me to the side. I swiveled around. The man was standing right there behind us. The hat was, once again, covering his eyes. And the man raised his axe and began to run towards us. A jolt of fear rushing throughout my body. I turned back around and took off down the path. And Sarah and I ran for our lives down the path. The crazed man following behind us. At this point, I clearly understood that whoever this guy was, he was clearly not Ms. Wallaby. There was a guy out here, a crazy, probably mentally unstable man, stalking the swamp. And now he was chasing us. I completely lost my mind. Sarah and I kept running towards Ms. Wallaby's house, hoping against all odds that we could make it there alive. I took a quick glance behind me. The man was still following us. His pickaxe was raised above his head, his head which bore a face I could still not see the eyes of. As Wallaby's house appeared behind the trees, Sarah pointed to it and we rushed up to it. I quickly jolted the door open, the two of us flung it closed and I locked it behind us as quick as humanly possible. The two of us stood behind the door, panting, waiting for the man to burst in. We stood in a frozen state of horror, waiting for his pickaxe to break through the door. Nothing happened, though. Sarah and I waited for several minutes, frozen in terror. And still, nothing happened. I motioned for us to go upstairs. We ran over to the staircase and sped up it, running into our room. We looked out the window, which we noticed Miss Wallenby hadn't covered up yet. 
There was no man outside. Instead, there was only one person standing outside the house, and it was Ms. Wallenby. She was walking towards the house, a garden rake in her hands. Where the hell did that guy go to? asked Sarah. And Ms. Wallenby's just out there. She didn't even see him. What the hell? This is creeping me the hell out, I said. Something's definitely not right here. You know, Sarah said, I'm starting to think that Ms. Wallaby isn't so crazy anymore. Something's definitely wrong with this swamp. She paused and looked intently at me. Do you think that guy was the miner? Well, I laughed. <laughs> You've got to be shitting me, I said. You think that there really is a miner out there? Fuck, I had a pickaxe, said Sarah loudly. What else do you want the guy to be? I don't know, I said. This isn't exactly an easy situation to understand. Both of us heard the front door open, and we quickly rushed downstairs, as Wallenby had entered the house. Good evening, children, she said. Meatloaf for supper. I should be ready soon. I'll start making it now. I glanced at Ms. Wallenby's arm. Her wound from earlier had formed into a large, ugly scar. Ms. Wallenby glanced back at me. Something wrong? she asked. No, I said. There's... There was a man in the forest, chimed Sarah. A big-ass man with a big-ass pickaxe. Ms. Wallenby's expression shifted. Oh, shit, she muttered quietly under her breath. And she nervously began to look around. Children, she said, do not go outside for the rest of the night. You understand? Sarah, don't bring up this minor bullcrap, I said. Really, it was probably that carbuncle guy playing a trick on us. No, 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 cried Miss Wallaby. Don't you see, I've been telling you, children, that there's a miner out here, and you... She stopped. <sighs> Stay inside, you hear? I sighed. I'm not planning on going back out there, I said, especially after some old shit tried to kill us. Well, good boy, she said, turning back around and picking up a wooden spoon. She then swirled around and pointed it at me. Oh, and mind your mouth. Dinner came and went. Night fell and Sarah and I retreated to our room. Ms. Wallamy came up before we went to bed and placed a board on the window, smiling and saying, well, Now you can actually sleep up here. She chuckled and they went back downstairs. I actually got a fairly good amount of sleep that night. I'd fallen asleep in the course of about half an hour. And I only woke up at about four in the morning. It was at that point when I heard a noise coming from outside. A furious hacking noise from outside the window. I immediately jumped out of the bed and stood in front of the covered window. Sarah still sleeping in her bed. I slid the board to the side just a hair and peered out. There was nothing in sight. The hacking sounded like it was coming from the distance, about a half mile off. It sounded like the noise of metal hitting wood, a loud, obnoxious banging. Well, the noise ceased after about five minutes. Still unsure of what lay outside, I continued to stare out of the window for about another ten minutes. It was only after that time had passed when I saw the person who'd been making the noise. That same fellow from the previous day. It was the miner, walking towards the house. He was carrying his pickaxe over his shoulder, looking down towards the ground. He walked silently towards the front door, then turned the knob and opened it. And the miner walked inside the house. I panicked. I immediately turned to Sarah. Wake up, I said quietly. She immediately began to stir. That miner's inside the house. He's freaking inside. Sarah immediately jumped up. What? She said, also becoming panicked. He's inside? I just saw him walk inside the house, I said. And suddenly I heard loud, heavy footsteps. They sounded like they were coming up the stairs. Oh God, I said, suddenly beginning to fear for my life. I backed up against the wall. The footsteps continued to get closer. Finally, they approached our bedroom door and stopped. 
The knob turned and the door creaked open. I was about to go into a full-out panic when I saw who the person at the door was. It was Miss Wallenby. A huge sigh of relief flashed over me. Oh, sorry, she said. I didn't realize you kids were awake. I didn't want to disturb you. I thought I heard some noises and thought I'd better come check on you just to make sure you were okay. I breathed heavily. Yeah, we're okay, I replied, turning to Sarah who nodded. Someone entered the house, I said. A man through the front door. Really? She asked. I was actually in the front room myself just now. Nobody came through it. I was startled. Confusion began to sweep over me. Ms. Wallenby's face grew into a large smile. Well, I'll leave you kids alone for now. And she closed the door and left. The morning progressed. At seven o'clock, Sarah and I left the bedroom and headed downstairs. Miss Wallenby was preparing a large pot of oatmeal. Morning, kids, she said. Oh, sorry I woke you up so early. I didn't mean to do that. That's fine, I said. We were, I think, just a bit freaked out over your minor stories. Oh, the minor, asked Miss Wallenby. I'm sorry about that. I guess I'm trying to protect you kids is all. He's definitely one scary fellow, that miner. Well, Miss Wallaby didn't sound at all concerned about the miner. What do you kids like to do today? She asked. Go into town and go to the market. Fun time we'll have there. Sounds good, I said. We all finished breakfast and then walked out into town with Miss Wallaby. Mr. Carbuncle had joined us along the halfway point. We spent a good three hours there, going from market to market. Well, the markets consisted of several wooden tables with gross vegetables lying on them, into one general store, and then to a bank. Being in a town that was this old and filthy made me glad I lived in a somewhat modernized area of the world. Well, we all eventually came back, Mr. Carbuncle saying goodbye and heading off to his shack. Ms. Wallenby stayed in the house and began to unpack her groceries while Sarah and I went outside. I think we should go to that shack, said Sarah. The one we saw the miner in yesterday. We should go there. Are you kidding? I asked. What if he's there again? He was there for a reason, she said. Maybe he thinks that's where this fabled gold is. Don't be silly, I replied. Well, I'm going there. Sarah, do not go there. If that miner's there, you're going to get yourself into a shitload of trouble. And by trouble, I mean danger. Sarah, without another word, began trotting off down the path. Oh, damn it, I said quietly. I decided that it was in my best interest to follow and make sure she was safe. We both followed the path, eventually getting to the shack. Sarah found the doorway, which was missing the door, and we both entered. Well, the shack was very small on the inside, about ten feet by ten feet. There was a wooden counter which extended from the wall on one side, almost like a bar, and in the middle of the wooden floor was an array of hack marks and chipped wood. <sighs> I knew it, said Sarah. That miner thinks the gold's underneath his shack. Well, what do we do? I asked. There's nothing we can do, actually. We should get the hell out of here, knowing that that miner could come back here. Sarah examined the mess in the middle of the shack. She shuffled some wood chips around. Looks like he's having a pretty difficult time hacking through this wood, said Sarah. Sarah, let's get the hell out of here, I said intently. We need to... And I stopped. Looked out a hole in the shack in which there may have once been a window. And out in the swamp, I saw him. The miner was walking towards the shack, pickaxe in hand. Shit, oh shit, shit, I said. Sarah, the miner's coming. What do we do? She said, a look of terror immediately forming on her face. We need to hide, I said. Quick, behind this counter thing. We both ducked behind the counter. The miner walked into the room, his boots thumping heavily on the wooden floor. He grunted an unusually high grunt, then pulled up his pickaxe and swung viciously at the ground. 
Sarah and I both flinched at the sound of the pickaxe hitting the floor. The sound matched the sounds I'd heard from our bedroom last night as well. The miner took ten more swings at the ground before pausing. I slowly turned around and peered over the top of the counter, looking towards the miner. He rose his pickaxe into the air, his sleeves falling to his elbows, and let the tool swing down. In that moment in which his pickaxe was raised, however, I saw something. On the upper part of his arm I saw a small line of red, part of a scar engraved onto his skin. I turned around. Sarah was looking straight ahead, clearly fearing for her life. The miner took another swing, this one his last, and then grunted another high-pitched grunt, and then walked off. I stared at him as he walked off into the distance, down the path and back towards Ms. Wallaby's house. Listen, I said, quickly turning to Sarah. What the fuck is that guy's problem? Sarah asked. I'm beginning to think Ms. Wallaby's telling the truth. No, I said. Listen, I think Ms. Wallaby is the miner. Sarah gasped. What? she said. There was a scar on that miner's arm, I said, just like the one Ms. Wallaby got when she cut herself yesterday. Are you serious? asked Sarah. Absolutely, I said. I think Ms. Wallaby is dressing up as this miner so that she can search for this gold. Or she wants to scare everyone else away so that she can have it for herself. I think Mom was right about Ms. Wallaby living down here for the treasure. Shit, Tim! Sarah said. It all makes sense. I say we go confront Miss Wallenby about it. No, I replied. We can't do that. She'll just deny it. We need to catch her in the act. Well, how do we do that? asked Sarah. The both of us getting up and beginning to walk out of the shack and back to Miss Wallenby's house. Well, we find part of her costume, I said. The beard or something. We take it, then we come to this shack tonight. Well, she'll be back, because she's been out every other night. When she comes back without the beard, we'll pop out and confront her about it. Mm, it sounds like a plan, Sarah said. We continued and arrived at Miss Wallenby's house, where she was preparing dinner. We then ate, went upstairs and into our bedroom. We decided then that it was time to execute our plan. We need to find Wallenby's room, I said. That's where the costume probably is. The two of us left our room and went down the short upstairs hallway. Sarah opened a door on the right and opened the only one on the left. Inside, I saw a bed and several dresses. Here, I said. Sarah closed the door and walked over to mine. We both entered the bedroom and immediately began looking through drawers. We searched up and down through drawer after drawer, before Sarah finally tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around to find her holding a long, grey beard in her hand. Oh, jackpot, I said. I was right. The two of us crept downstairs and into the front room, where Ms. Wallenby was sitting in a chair reading a book. We snuck up behind her, slowly opened the front door and crept out, heading for the shack. The swamp was unusually eerie that night. There were sounds from unknown insects and creatures coming from all around, and the warm, damp air seemed to seep in and out of the surrounding atmosphere. The two of us eventually reached the shack where we found a light bulb dimly illuminating the structure from the inside. At first I thought that Ms. Wallenby had beaten us to the shack, but found that indeed she hadn't once we realized the place was empty. We entered the shack and, beard in hand, hid behind the counter. Now we wait, I said. However, wait we did not. It didn't take long at all, only about ten minutes in fact, for the miner to approach. Sarah and I, peering out the small hole in the wall, saw him lumbering down the path, pickaxe in hand, although there was no beard missing. Oh, Miss Wallenby seemed fully dressed up. Mm, she must have a second beard, I said to Sarah. Yeah, that's good planning. Do we still jump out? She asked. Oh, yep, I replied. 
The miner entered the shack and immediately began hacking at the ground. However, this time, he only hacked twice. I peered up at the miner, who was looking around the room suspiciously, then glanced behind him, and then left the shack. What? I said quietly as the miner began strutting back down the path from which he'd come. Why is she leaving? I don't know, said Sarah. Maybe she knows something isn't right. Then I guess it's time to resort to a plan B, I said. I guess we just go home and confront Miss Wallenby about it. Well, I guess that'll have to do, said Sarah. After all, we do have this beard. That's enough evidence to convict her. We both agreed and then began walking back to the house, keeping our pace down so as not to catch up with Miss Wallenby before she got home and undressed from her minor costume. After about half an hour, we approached the house and entered. Miss Bollenby was, once again, sitting on the chair reading her book. <sighs> Miss Wallenby, I proclaimed, and she turned around. Oh, kids, she exclaimed. What were you doing out there? I thought I told you not to go out after dark. Well, we did, I said. And look at this. I held out the beard which we'd found in her room. Miss Wallenby's expression changed from a look of confusion to a look of depression. Oh, children, I'm so sorry, she said sadly. I should have told you earlier. Sarah and I sat down on a couch in the room, facing Miss Wallenby. I'm sorry, she said. I shouldn't have been doing any of this when you kids arrived. I suppose I shouldn't have been doing any of this in the first place either. Sarah and I both looked at her finally ready to get the truth out. I may have been dressing up as the miner, she said. Well, I'd heard the story about the gold and the miner who died here. I made up the story about his ghost roaming the area to try and keep people out of the swamp. <laughs> I wanted to look for the gold myself, I guess. And I think I found it. I believe it's under that shack along the trail. But that's beside the point. I've been dressing up as the ghost of the miner now for a while. Going out there and trying to get it for myself. Well, I've been dressing up trying to bring life to my story so I can keep other people away from the treasure. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay, I said. Just please don't do it anymore, at least not while we're out here. Oh, and I'm sorry I chased you kids down the path that one time with a pickaxe, she said. I guess I went a little too far in trying to keep you guys away from that shack. Oh, I'm so sorry. We were going to tell you that we found out when you weren't there tonight, said Sarah. We were going to tell you once you'd arrived there, but, well, you left too early. We were surprised you actually had another beard. I nodded in agreement, along with Sarah, and we both smiled. But Mrs. Wallenby didn't return the smile. She instead returned our comment with a look of confusion. What are you talking about? she asked intently. The smiles quickly left the faces of both Sarah and me. I don't have two beards, said Miss Wallenby. I didn't go to that shack tonight. Oh, Miss Wallenby quickly got up from the couch and moved to the staircase. Look, I'm going to go ahead and give Martha the bus driver a call, she said. And I do hope they run those buses at night. So a classic old school Louisiana ghost story for you this evening. What do you think of that one? I had a lot of fun doing that. Well, um, took a bit of time getting this one together because I went out on a 40 kilometer bike ride today. And um, yeah, well, I'm suffering as a consequence, but still managed to get you the story that I know you would love for this evening. And um, yeah, lots of projects coming up. I keep promising you things, continuations of series that I started. And the good news is I'm getting back on schedule and they are coming up definitely. Yeah, I'm sorry for the wait. I know some of you are really waiting on some of those series that I started ages ago, but they are coming, okay? So bear with me just a little bit longer. Well, that is enough for one evening. Like I said, we're on a 40-kilometer bike ride today, and I'm exhausted and aching all over in places I don't even want to describe. So, 
Enough for one evening, please. <laughs> back again tomorrow with the next episode of the podcast. And back here on Friday with something very special. Not sure what yet, but something very special, okay? Till the next time, my dear friends. Very, very sweet dreams. And bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.